In this part of the tutorial, we're going to talk about convergence tests. There are various different methods you can use to test whether or not a series is convergent. And if you try a particular test and you find it doesn't help you to determine whether or not the series is convergent, you've just got to try a different test instead. And as you become more experienced in trying to solve these things, it does become a bit easier, and you do begin to get an instinctive feel for which test will work best in a particular situation. We're going to start with the comparison test. Suppose we have two series, an AN series and a BN series, such that this inequality holds, so AN is less than or equal to BN for all natural numbers N. And importantly, the AN and BN terms have to be non-negative as well. And the idea of this test is, we use it when one of our two series, either the AN series or the BN series, is known to converge or diverge. And if the BN series converges, that means we can say the AN series converges as well. And if the AN series diverges, then we can say the BN series diverges as well. So when you're using this test, you have to be careful to use it the right way round. So you have to be in one of these two situations here. Either the BN series has to be convergent, or the AN series has to be divergent. Because if the AN series converges, that doesn't enable us to say anything at all about the BN series. And similarly, if the BN series diverges, that doesn't enable us to say anything at all about the AN series. So here's an example of the comparison test. Suppose we want to determine whether this series converges or diverges. And the idea is we're going to show that it converges by comparing it with another series, which we know is convergent. So we can see that 3n squared minus 3 is smaller than 3n squared, and also n to the power 5 plus 1 is larger than n to the power 5. So that means 3n squared minus 3 over n to the 5 plus 1 has to be smaller than 3n squared over n to the 5, because we've made the numerator smaller and the denominator larger. And that's the same as 3 over n cubed. And we know the series 3 over n cubed converges because if we move the constant outside the sum, it's the same as 3 times the sum of 1 over n cubed from n equals 1 to infinity, and we've seen previously that this is a convergent series. So basically we're taking this series 3 over n cubed as our bn series, which we know is convergent, and we're taking our original series 3n squared minus 3 over n to the 5 plus 1 as our an series. And by the comparison test, we can say that our series, 3n squared minus 3 over n to the 5 plus 1, is convergent. Here's another example which is similar, except this time we'll show that this series is divergent. In this case, 2n squared plus 1 is larger than 2n squared, and 5n cubed minus 4 is smaller than 5n cubed. So we can say that 2n squared plus 1 over 5n cubed minus 4 must be larger than 2n squared over 5n cubed, which is the same as 2 over 5n. And the series 2 over 5n is the same as 2 over 5 times the series of 1 over n from n equals 1 to infinity. All we've done in that step is take the constant 2 over 5 outside the summation. So here we've taken this series 2 over 5n as our an series, and we know this series is divergent because the harmonic series 1 over n is divergent. So therefore our BN series, which is our original series, 2n squared plus 1 over 5n cubed minus 4, must also be divergent by the comparison test. The next test we're going to look at is called the ratio test. So suppose we have any series of terms denoted by AN, and to apply this test we examine the modulus of the ratio of AN plus 1 to AN, and then we take the limit of that as n tends to infinity, and we call this limit L. And if this limit is smaller than 1, the series is convergent. If the limit is greater than 1, the series is divergent. And the important point about this test is that if L is equal to 1, we actually can't draw any conclusions at all. The series might be convergent or it might be divergent. So this is why the ratio test is not always the most appropriate test to use, because you might get a limit L which is equal to 1, and in that case you just have to try an alternative test. So suppose we want to examine the convergence of the series 7 to the power n over n factorial. We start by calculating the ratio an plus 1 over an, 
and using the rules of indices and the rules of factorials, in this case we find that a n plus 1 over a n is equal to 7 over n plus 1. If we take the limit of 7 over n plus 1 as n tends to infinity, clearly this is going to be 0. And since 0 is smaller than 1, we can say that by the ratio test, the series is convergent. Here's another example of the ratio test. This time we have the series 5 to the power n over 2 to the power n plus 1 times n. And using a similar method to the last example, we start by working out the ratio a n plus 1 over a n. And in this case, after some simplifications, we find that it's equal to 5 over 2 times n over n plus 1. Now in this case, taking the limit as n tends to infinity, we start by taking the 5 over 2 outside the limit, and then we find that the limit of n over n plus 1 is actually equal to 1. And you can see this if you divide the numerator and denominator by n, and then apply the algebra of limits. So our limit is 5 over 2 times 1, which is just 5 over 2. And since this is greater than 1, we say that by the ratio test, this time we have a divergent series. The next test we're going to look at is called the root test, and this test has some similarities to the ratio test, except it probably isn't applicable in so many cases. So once again, we suppose we have a series of terms which we denote by a n, and this time we calculate the nth root of the modulus of a n, which is the same as raising the modulus of a n to the power 1 over n, and we take the limit of that as n tends to infinity, and call this limit l. And once again, if L is smaller than 1, the series converges. If L is greater than 1, then it diverges. And if L is equal to 1, then we cannot draw any conclusions from this test. So here's one example, and in this example, our terms in our series are given by the square root of 3 to the power n over 2 to the n. If we take the nth root of 3 to the power n over 2 to the n, then using some rules of indices, we get root 3 over 2, which is just a constant, so it actually has no dependence on n. And therefore, when we take the limit as n tends to infinity, we're just taking the limit of a constant, so we get the constant, the square root of 3 over 2. And since this is actually smaller than 1, we can say that by the root test, the series is convergent. So now we're going to look at one more test, and this one is called the alternating series test. And it works in a very particular type of situation. So the trick with this one is to notice when you've got something which is in the form of an alternating series, which generally means that it can be written in the form minus 1 to the power n times something else, which we call a n, which means that the series goes minus a1 plus a2 minus a3 plus a4 and so on. And it does actually work whether you have minus 1 to the power n or minus 1 to the power n plus 1 here. So if we had minus 1 to the power n plus 1, the signs in the series would change, so we'd have a1 minus a2 plus a3, etc. And in this test, we have to check three conditions. The conditions are, first of all, a n has to be non-negative for all n. Secondly, a n has to be monotonically decreasing. And thirdly, a n must tend to zero, as n tends to infinity. And if all three of these conditions hold, then we can say that the series minus 1 to the n times a n is convergent. So we're just going to look at a very simple example of that. Here the terms in our series are given by minus 1 to the n times 1 over n. Now in this example, obviously 1 over n is decreasing as n increases, and 1 over n tends to 0 as n tends to infinity, and also 1 over n is always non-negative. And therefore by the alternating series test, we can say that our series, which goes minus 1 plus a half, minus a third, plus a quarter, etc., is convergent. Just as one final point, here's the definition of absolute convergence. We say that a series a n is absolutely convergent if the series modulus a n is convergent. So in the previous example, we looked at the series minus 1 to the n over n, and we used the alternating series test to show that the series was convergent. However, if you take the modulus of minus 1 to the n over n, it just gives you 1 over n. And we've already seen that the series 1 over n, in other words the harmonic series, is not convergent. So therefore the series minus 1 to the n over n is convergent but not absolutely convergent. And if a series is absolutely convergent, 
then it will always be convergent. However, the converse is not true. So if a series is convergent, you can't necessarily say that it's absolutely convergent, as this example has shown. So let's just summarise what we've talked about in this tutorial. When you're trying to show that a series is convergent or divergent, there are various tests and methods that can help you. For example, if the series is a geometric series, then we automatically know that it's convergent, provided that the constant multiplier r is smaller than 1 in absolute value. Sometimes we can use the comparison test to compare the series with another series, which we know is convergent or divergent. The ratio test and the root test are alternative tests which can sometimes work well, and the alternating series test is another important one to be aware of, but you've got to make sure you check the assumptions of the alternating series test before you go ahead and use it. If we know a series is convergent, it might or might not be possible to calculate the limit of the series. For example, if we have a geometric series of numbers, we can easily calculate the limit using the simple formula 1 over 1 minus r. On the other hand, if you've worked out that a series is convergent using the comparison test, or the ratio test for example, then usually it won't be easy to work out what the limit is. You might just have to settle for showing that the series is convergent, in other words, showing that the limit exists, without actually calculating the limit. And if the series is divergent, then obviously it doesn't have a finite limit. Thanks for watching this tutorial and look out for the next one coming soon.